Hi, welcome to Joanna's DIY Life. I am so glad you are here. On this channel, I love to sew and do home decor on a budget. Today, I'm going to be making the most adorable little sock bunnies. They are so easy and so stinking cute. Wait till the end. You're not going to believe they were socks, okay? Now, let's get crafty. Okay, so these are the socks that I used, and I got them at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to take one of the socks, and I'm going to be using, uh, this is dental floss, but you need thick thread. Um, these buttons are flat on one side, and then on this side, they have the little, you know, where you sew them on part. Cat litter, and good fabric scissors, stuffing, pom-poms, and a piece of um, felt. So I'm just going to stretch my sock over this container and dump my cat litter in. And then I am going to start stuffing. When you're stuffing, you want it kind of firm, but not, you know, rock solid, okay? And um, when you get to the heel part of the sock, that is your advantage. That's going to be your face. So make sure that you stick that out some. And you'll see what I'm talking about. See, the heel, it's going to stick out. It's, it makes the cutest little face on these bunnies. And you can do this with any size or any color socks. I just wanted mine gray. I like these socks. And I actually got them for my husband, but they weren't tall enough. He has to have tall socks for his boots. And they weren't tall enough. So I snatched a pair and um, started, <laughs> started making my little bunnies. I thought the color was great. Um, so you want to go... Up to the top, but you don't want to go so far up that you don't have ears. Um, I want a floppy eared bunny. So I just go up where it makes, you know, you'll, you'll see that it makes a little head. And then you fold it on the sides like, you know, like this. Fold in both sides. This makes it easier for you to cut straight down the middle and get as close to the head, you know, as you can. So then I just take my needle and my floss or thread and I'm going to run it through here and then I'm going to start going around and around to secure that and then I'll tie it off. Now when I'm sewing and tying off, I wanna make sure I tie my ends of my thread if I have enough to tie. That makes me so angry when I pull it through and I got it pinched and then it just pulls right through. It aggravates me. But anyways, this is the makings of my little bunny. Now I'm gonna do the ears, okay? So what I'm gonna do for the ears, I'm going to be using a pipe cleaner, which I forgot to mention in the beginning. I'm so sorry. You do not have to do this though. But I am wanting to shape my ears, so I'm just going to bend my pipe cleaner in the middle. And then I'm going to shove it down in there and get it as close to the bottom as I possibly can, pushing and maneuvering the pipe cleaner to the sides of the sock, the top of the sock there. Now I'm just going to cut a slit so I have a little bit to work with because I can't get my glue gun all the way down in the bottom of there. So. I'm going to peel it back and the reason I didn't cut all the way down is because my sock rolls so um, I'm just going to be creating a glue thing and then I'm just going to cut right through the glue so my so my edges are sealed on this one I'm just making sure that I run my glue down the inside of that sock and then all around so that my pipe cleaner is secure and then I'm just going to smoosh all the fabric down you can use fabric glue, you can use uh, fabric hot glue, you know, whatever. This is just hot glue and it works fine. So I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, making sure that I secure my pipe cleaner down and as close to the edge as I can possibly get it. Because um, when I cut it, I don't want to cut through my pipe cleaner. Now I'm going to just let this cool because the glue is hot and you don't want to cut through hot glue. 
Okay, so now it's dry. I'm going to go up and back down. I'm going to be going small for the tips of the ears and then just cutting down. This is why I said you need pretty sharp scissors. And then I'm going to go down the other side. And this looks like I'm going to cut my sock all to pieces, but I'm not. I'm not. I had to get the end of the scissors to cut that. So anyways, just get it as close as you can. And um, if there's any gaps, make sure you glue those shut and trim off any excess. There you go. This kind of looks like a Pikachu or something. I don't know. I'm weird. But anyway, um, I'm still, you know, making sure that it's all sealed together. Even down at the bottom is where I really had to add glue where I couldn't reach before. Okay, now, <laughs> that looks so funny. But um, anyways, my ears are bendable and floppy and weird looking. You can cut them any size you want to, however big you want to cut them. So now I am just going to take my floss and instead of um, uh, leaving it solid, which you can, I am going to put little stitches by just going in and out and pulling a little taut to make it look like they have arms because I just thought that was so stinking cute and it put some you know a little character and structure to my bunnies um so I do this on both sides just going in and out and pulling tight you'll have to secure your thread before you go in and out on the back side and then when I'm done I just tie it off and then go to the other side and try to make them as even as I can. Okay, so there they are. And they're pretty even. You know, nobody's perfect. Uh, but anyways, now I could sew the eyes on because they're buttons. But this is easier for y'all. I'm just going to pinch in where I want my thread. And then go back in, but not in the same hole. And then go back through and we're going to pull just slightly to make indentions for the eyes here. You don't have to use buttons if you don't have them. You can use black pom-poms or whatever. And I'm just going to tie off right here because it's going to be covered up with a button. Then I'm going to make sure I tie my knot in my thread. And I am going to be pinching up a spot for the nose so I am just gonna fool it with it and then make sure you go straight across and go in the same holes when you're poking your needles in and out because it'll be wonky if you don't and I'm just going back and forth and I'm gonna pull this a little tight just like I did for the eyes but I want it a little smaller than the eyes of course and then I am going to go in leave loops while I'm in here to make my whiskers um make sure you get your loops even but you just sew back and forth until you get however many whiskers you want make sure you don't pull it all the way through and then i will i don't know what i do oh i tie it off okay i'm gonna tie it off i didn't know if i tied it off or glued it y'all i forget what i do so now I am going to take my hot glue gun and I'm going to make sure these are pretty even and I'm just going to take the glue and just put the smallest amount of glue there just to tack it and make sure my whiskers don't slip through. Okay, and I do this on both sides. Then you need a pair of sharp scissors or you're going to have burrs on your ends like I did. But I take a pair of scissors and I just clip through my loops and that forms my little whiskers. Okay, now I'm just gonna take and add a little bit of glue and I'm gonna push my button in there. Like I said, you can use pom-poms. You can even use paint if you wanna paint your eyes. That's up to you. But I had these buttons and um, so that's what I used. Now I'm just going to make eyelashes, but not with that marker because I couldn't see it. So I'm just going to get my Sharpie. I'm going to make little eyelashes because this one is a, um, it's going to be a little girl. 
and I, I got excited. Okay, uh, now I set my pom pom on for the nose, and I'm just gonna draw my little my little mouth thing there, and then I glue my pink pom pom down. Oh, it's cute! I love it. Okay, now. Um, I was trying to form a neck, but you know that that just wasn't working. So I am going to take my floss thread, whatever, and I'm going to go in and just make little indentions, you know, like you did for the eyes and the the, the whiskers part. But I'm not going to pull real tight. I'm just going to pull it until it looks right, you know, and comes in where it looks like it has a neck and not one big fat body. I cannot wait until you see the end result of these. I made um, a, a boy, a girl, and a baby. And I'll tell you at the end how I did it and what I done to, you know, get them together and assembled. But now I'm just going to take this piece of felt or f that's actually batting, but whatever will work. You don't have to put this on there if you don't want to. Um, you can actually put clothes on them if you want to, whatever you want to do. Trying to figure out placement. I think I gave the guy like a beer belly looking thing. But anyways, I'm just going to put a hot glue on here. And I fold it in half and glue it. And then fold the other half. And be careful you don't burn yourself with glue. And just tack that down. And then I am going to um, give it some legs. Okay. So I'm going to take my thread. I'm going to go in from the back. And I'm going to tie it off so it doesn't slip through the sock. And then I am going to go around. Make sure you come out in about the same spot there. And I'm just going to do this a couple times and pull tight. And make sure I get my string the same, the same tautness or tightness so that it's not looping. And then I will do that. And then I'll tie it off in the back because we're going to cover it with the tail. It kind of looks like it has... A butt but anyways um, I was trying to be nice there so we are going to like I said tie it off and make sure that it's not gonna come loose and you can squish down in between it when you're adding your um, thread or string or whatever through there to form the legs you just squish through the cat litter or you can use rice or beans or whatever you want to use now it stands up on its own um, so now I'm just gonna take my big fluffy tail and I'm gonna put glue a little higher than the crack or you know the, the, the high part of the crack <laughs> sorry and then I the tails on okay and then I'm gonna bend my ears around all right now I'm gonna take this ribbon that I bought at Hobby Lobby I fell in love with this ribbon and I am going to make a bow this is a hair bow like literally I did hair bows for years and this is exactly how I did a hair bow so I am going to go slow for you right here and show you how I do this okay this is not the slow version this is just uh, this is what it would look like okay so now I'm gonna show you take your ribbon and you hold it this way you fold one over and make a loop then you fold the other one on the other side over and make a loop and kind of twist it down when you're doing this bring the other one back up and through the loops under there and make sure your sides are the same then bring it around again over top making sure your loops are the same and then you have it okay now you want to I you can leave a tail if you want to but I'm gonna cut it off at an angle make sure you don't cut your other ribbon okay because then you're just you're messed up so I cut it like that and then I am going to tie around it there's ways you can do this okay I didn't have anything so I got to look for something. Hold on one second. Okay, so you can clip it with a big hair clip. Or you can use a small staple gun. Tim Holtz has a tiny attacher. And it's in my Amazon store. And it is awesome. 
um, but this is the one I just had on hand. So I staple in the middle. Make sure you put your staple long ways or side, you know, like it is right there in the picture. I don't know if that's long ways or sideways or crossways or I don't know. But anyway, now I've lost my needle. I've got to find my needle, y'all. I can't keep up with anything. Hold on. Aha. It was in the floor. It slipped behind my desk on the other side. So anyways, you're just going to go up through it from the behind or whatever and then back down. Then go over your staple. And I usually make that kind of a bigger stitch. And then go back up through and back down. This makes sure that your loops are not going anywhere. And I will tell you, when you staple, make sure you staple all your layers or your bow will flop out. Now I'm just going to wrap around the bow twice and I'm going to start pulling and scrunching, pulling and scrunching, trying to get it as even as possible and make my loops really you know stand up and look good I loved making these big hair bows when I made these hair bows I absolutely adored them then all you have to do when you get it looking perky like you want is just tie it off in the back and then we'll go to the next step now your beautiful bow will look like this. I don't want that on the front, so I'm gonna flip it over and put that toward the back. Make sure you pull all your little, you know, this has a design on the end, so I wanna make sure that it looks real straight and cute, and you might have to pull and then fluff your bow. Look how darling. Okay, now I can take this ribbon right here that I have, fold it over and glue it, and put it either way, stripes up or you know the burlap up but I'm not going to be using that one I am going to use this gingham ribbon um, this also came from Hobby Lobby and it's just a bit smaller and I'm just going to cut a piece off about two inches usually is what I was was would use I didn't measure this one though and I'm just going to add a little bit of hot glue back here and this ribbon is thin and that was hot so be careful when you do this then I'm just going to pull it around and my glue wasn't set so I pulled it off so make sure it's stuck down before you pull it then pull it around measure it make sure it's not real puckered and real tight you know get it like you want it and then snip off any excess and then glue that tab down and you're done now of course if it was a real hair bow you'd put a clip on there and uh, that's a whole different ball game but um, I'm just going to use my spatula and make sure it's all smushed down and tight. That bow is gorgeous. I mean gorgeous. It would look so stinking cute with a little gingham outfit for a little girl. Oh my goodness. But anyways, let's get off of that and back on bunnies, okay? So anyway, now it's ready to go. So I'm just going to take this and it's so cute. Oh my God. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to take my bunny and I'm going to put glue on the top of my bunny right here. And then I'm going to put my bow on there and press it down until it's secure. Make sure you don't put too much glue and burn yourself on the back because it will smoosh everywhere. But I'm um, just going to hold it till it sticks there. It kind of looked like a mouse. But anyway, there's your bunny. And you can move the ears however you want them. Over the bow, out, down, whatever. There's the, the little, you know, the guy I made. And I just smushed that hat that I had down on there. And there's a baby from a baby sock. And it has the pipe cleaners in the ears too. And I just gave the boy a bow tie and a lower little saggy belly. He doesn't have pipe cleaners in his ears because they just hang down. But um, ain't these the cutest little things? They are so stinking cute. And I'm just going to take chalk and rub down her ears. This is just red chalk. You can use paint. You can use markers. Or you don't have to do anything. Um, cheek blush works good too. Or, you know, whatever. But I'm just going to make her ears pink. And chalk is good because if you get too much, just dust it off. But anyway... 
These are so cute. And I absolutely love how they turned out. And here's what they look like set up. And they are so stinking cute. Um, sorry about the lighting. It is awful. But um, I love them. I cannot wait to display them in my house. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And subscribe to my channel. Because I would love to have you. Leave me a comment and let me know what you thought. And remember, you are a blessing. Until next time, goodbye.